If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. And guys, today we're going to talk about the difference between leverage and position size, okay? A lot of the times I use leverage that's pretty high compared to what most people are used to hearing, like 100x leverage, 120x leverage sometimes, 70x leverage, whatever. And they get the same response every single time. And they're like, Geo, you're crazy. And I'm like, no, actually, I think that you're crazy for not using that leverage. And they're very confused. They're very baffled. And I want to explain why. Now, first things first, guys, leverage is a tool, okay? It's a weapon that you can use. It's similar to credit, okay? Credit is very powerful if you have strong credit. If you know how to utilize your tool, it can be very powerful. However, if you abuse it or you don't know what you're doing when you use it, you can also get wrecked. So in this video, I'm going to teach you the difference between leverage and position size and why leverage doesn't actually matter for the way that we trade at least and why position size is actually what you should be focusing on. So first things first, what is leverage? Let's just say you have $100 in your account. Okay, you have $100 in your account. Leverage allows you to borrow a certain amount of money from your exchange in order to create a larger position size than the dollar amount that you have. And so your math equation is as follows. Your money, which is $100, which is your margin, okay, that's what it's called on the exchange, is your margin, multiplied by the amount of leverage you choose, let's just say it's 10x leverage, equals your position size, okay? So now you have $1,000 on the trade, but you only have $100. So now how does this affect your trade? If you are 10x leverage and the price goes up 1%, you go up 10%. So you multiply your profit, but you also multiply your drawdown. And whatever leverage you choose to use will determine where your liquidation point is. Liquidation means if price gets to that level, you lose. You lose all your money. You lose your complete margin. Now, guys, I don't want to spend too much time here, but I want to illustrate how your position works really with a quick picture here. So you could see we have $900 that you borrow from the exchange and you have your $100 on top. So what happens is if price moves in your direction, then you earn the profit on $1,000, even though you only have $100 in your margin. But if price goes in the other direction, the exchange is not going to risk losing their money. So in your $1,000 position, where you would normally lose $100, they take it off the top, aka they take it off of your cut of the position, right? Because you're 10x leverage, so you're borrowing $900, and you have $100 in the trade. So if you go down minus 100 on your $1,000 position, so what happens? They're going to take away your $100, aka you get liquidated, which we're going to talk about in a second here, and their capital is protected. Super basic illustration of leverage, but that's essentially how it works for the newcomers that may not know. Now, let me explain why position size matters and why leverage actually does not matter. Remember, I told you leverage is a tool. So leverage is a tool that is able to grant you a larger position size than what you actually have in your account. There are a few benefits of this. Number one, you do not need to keep your own funds exposed on exchanges because let's be real, some of them are scams. So you don't need to have a super large amount of money on your exchanges in order to place position sizes that you would normally place. And number two, you can even stretch a bit and open up position sizes larger than what you have AKA borrowing, AKA the world is run by borrowing. You should learn how to do it. Okay, so now let's just say you, you wanted to short Bitcoin here, okay? This is why leverage doesn't matter. All your leverage does is change your liquidation point, okay? All it does is change your liquidation, meaning if price hits this level, for example, you get out of the trade, right? You get liquidated, the exchange takes all your money, you lose it all, right? You lose your whole $100. The way that I trade, and the way that I teach you guys how to trade is to always have a very clear invalidation, okay? You guys know I'm a scalper. I scalp on the one minute time frame, but I can also swing trade, but it remains the same. No matter how you trade, you should have an exit plan for your trade. Every single trade before you hit open, you should have a plan to close it, whether it's closing at a loss, obviously not preferable, or closing in profit. You should have an exit strategy for every single trade that you open. If my stop loss is here, right? My stop loss is, is where the red box ends. Then technically speaking, my leverage doesn't matter because I'm going to get stopped out before I get liquidated. So if I'm at hundred X leverage 
and my liquidation point is here, it doesn't change anything if I'm at 50x leverage and my liquidation point is up here. Remember, all leverage does is multiply your profit and multiply your loss. That's all it does, right? But if I have a very clear invalidation, then it doesn't matter what my leverage is. It doesn't matter where my liquidation point is because I'm out of the trade before it hits my liquidation. So it doesn't matter in the slightest. Now, what matters is your position size because if you abuse leverage and you over position your size, what could happen is you may crank up the leverage to 200x and now all of a sudden your liquidation point falls within your invalidation and bam there goes your hundred dollars this is not good risk management i have another video on my youtube channel where i will link in the description below talking all about risk management so i recommend you check it out if you don't know what i'm talking about right now but you see the higher you crank up the leverage the closer your liquidation is and that's where people abuse it so this is why i use such high leverage because when i enter i enter on the one minute time frame i have a very clear idea and for example if i'm saying this is my invalidation then i'm using a leverage that will accommodate this invalidation so it doesn't matter where my leverage is my position size is what matters okay so now how can we use leverage to our advantage well the closer you get to your invalidation the higher the leverage you can use and the reason why i think it is dangerous to use low leverage as opposed to high leverage is because a lot of the times swing traders especially do not have an exit plan for their trades they just open it they see market cipher v they see a four hour red or green dot a long or short whichever the direction and then they just kind of pray and hope for the best no by using very high leverage as i do it trains you to be very disciplined i'm a sniper with my entries i have very clear invalidations and if price goes against my narrative in the slightest beyond my invalidation then i get out of the trade so for me when people say oh how are you using such high leverage you're crazy and crypto is already super volatile and whatever whatever I'm like, no, dude, you're crazy because you're not using high leverage. I'm disciplined enough to know exactly when to enter. If my invalidation is way up here, I'm not entering the trade over here. I'm waiting for the price to get right over here, right? And so what happens now when price gets all the way up here? Well, I can crank my leverage, meaning I can have a tight stop loss because I already know exactly where my invalidation is. I can crank up my leverage and I can have it just above where my invalidation is in this example here if this was my invalidation i would have to account for a two percent drawdown but if i'm disciplined and i know exactly where i want to enter and, and what i want to see well guess what i can crank up my leverage i can wait for price to get to exactly where i think price is going to get to i can have my liquidation level just above where my invalidation is and now i mean this is an exaggerated example but now I only need to account for a 0.1% drawdown as opposed to a 2% drawdown. So this is how position size matters, right? You have $100 in your margin and you 10x leverage. Cool. But your position size still remains the same. And no matter if price goes up or price goes down, your position size will be $1,000 no matter on what your leverage is, okay? You do not make more money if your leverage is higher. No, that's not how it works. All that happens if your leverage is higher is your margin goes lower. So follow me here. 100 times 10 is $1,000. You have your own $100 in the trade. Let's just say you crank up your leverage to 100x while still keeping your position size at 1,000. That means that if we carry the zero over from your margin to your leverage, because 10 times 100 is still 1,000, now all of a sudden you only have $10 of your own money in the trade and remember the illustration we drew at the beginning. Now you're borrowing $990 from your exchange. How does this change your P&L? Well, in the same example where if Bitcoin decides to move 5%, now remember you are multiplying whatever percent by your leverage. So instead of being up 50% of $100, which is $50, now you're up 500% of $10. So people manipulate their P&Ls pretty frequently and um it doesn't really do anything and in my opinion it's kind of embarrassing because it doesn't even matter what your leverage is your position size is what matters but using leverage correctly can allow you to put more money than you have in your account at a perfect point in the chart and if you're good at it and you're a sniper 
then you can really use it to your benefit. Anyways, guys, I hope that helped clarify. Uh, I've been getting quite a few questions on this, and um, I guess this is kind of the best way that I can explain that position size is really what matters and leverage doesn't mean anything. And so, um, you know, hopefully you learned a little something today. And guys, last but not least, if you're looking for an exchange where you can utilize leverage and other tools and position sizes and everything we learned in today's video, Mexi has the cheapest fees across the board. It is a 0.0% maker fee 0.01% taker fee if you don't know what that means you shouldn't be trading but if you do know what that means then you know that it's basically free and it's a free way for you to help support me and my channel and if you decide to do so thank you very much i appreciate it and yeah that's the difference between leverage and position size leverage don't matter all it does is change your liquidation but we are better here in my geodude community because we always have stop losses we always have clear invalidations and especially if you're a sniper we can really, really utilize these tools on MexC, of course. Guys, the VIP code for this video is going to be 6668. See you later.